I saw Chicago just tweeted that he he says he what, what was his tweet? He says I stole Johnny Boy's idea and made my own top ten RL teams of all time. Let me know your thoughts. See you guys while I while I look and see if we've got another show match available. Should I react to this? We, we'll probably have to skip through it though. I don't want to. Oh, it's actually pretty short. Should we see what Chicago said for his top ten teams of all time? Yeah. You guys, the chat are on top of Chicago's face. And, uh, a little bit of reasons why, kind of like I did with the players. Um, but All right. Magnus, and this team. Okay, so far exactly the same as me. NEU always. I like that. Come second in grand finals, and just we're always consistent and literally a threat with their speed, their offense. I can't make him any lighter. He's max. Top two teams in EU. But then top three in the world, because that's because that's when EU is a lot better, right? Oh, he's got some um, clips. Look at this. Chicago production value. He's got the a lot goal. Was scoring crazy backward reads. Mets and Norris had some of the best defense in the world. Magnus was one of the. All right, hold on. We gotta we gotta see what dominant. what else he got here. So the ro roster was Remco, Mets and Norris again, and I. Okay. Okay. So this team, if you guys do not know, was around during the season. <laughs> uh, guys, sorry, I've already got a max volume. I can't put it any uh, higher. Six, I believe. Yeah, season five and six. We them girls were like my rank, uh, eleven or twelve team. I had Weedem girls eleven or twelve. Who did I have at nine again? Wasn't my nine the NRG with Fireburner? I think it was. I wonder which team he's omitted in order to include Weedem girls. Maybe he's omitted his own team. Humble. Uh, right. Let's see. I'm just. Uh, I'm not gonna watch the whole video. We're just gonna see what he what he what he ranked. And right after actually secured fast so Plus, far this is fair oh uh, no he's he's left himself in g2 is chicago okay i that's just the exact same rank i had g2 is chicago i had them at eight so uh so far we're only one different <laughs> humble and Magalal. all right let's see who you put at seven start so unfortunately seven i'm going again just like okay so i had NRG with fireburner behind g2 with chicago because g2 is chicago um both these teams made Worlds and were in the final. Obviously, G NRG with Fireburner were closer to winning. But G2 with Chicago also made a World Final. But G2 with Chicago, they won Season 9 and Spring Series, which I thought was a bigger deal than winning uh, like Season 4 and 5 regionals, which is what NRG with... Or Season... Was it 5 and 6 regionals, which is what Fireburner NRG did? Pretty close, though. Uh, NRG with Fireburner didn't win X Games. That was Fireburner Jacob Garrett. I believe this NRG roster that he's referring to is Fireburner uh, Justin Garrett, not Jacob. So you've got to remember there were different rosters for NRG. So this is fair though. Good ranking so far. Respectable. Possible to win this much. Okay, also respectable. I think I had them in around about this range also. Um, so this is this is fine. I would say. It's an online demo, like online. Let's see who you put at five, though. Who did he put ahead of them? Now, flip side. Wait, which one, though? This might be a little bit like high. People might have them lower, but uh, in my opinion, even though they got first out of Worlds in season two and second in season one, even though the rosters were a little bit different, um, I do take a little bit of consideration considering that this was so long ago and the competition was probably not as good. But they to counter that they all. But wait, there's two different rosters, Chicago. You can't have them at first place at season two, second place season one. It was two different rosters. It was Mike Rules flip side and Greasy flip side. So he's probably just got one flip side in here. I had two flip sides. I had both the Greasy flip side and the Mike Rules flip side in my list. I think I had the. Didn't I have NRG with Fireburner at number six? And I think I had Greasy flip side at number seven. So this is already a little bit confusing. I don't know. You can't say flip side tactics, Chicago. It's two different rosters, man. Also did kind of start a meta, and they were the beginning of Rocket League Pro. Like, the Mike Rules slash Greasy Meister, the way they played was definitely influencing Pro Rocket League at the time. And just Yeah, it was just one player different, but that's still a different roster. You can't just, you can't say that, you know, you change one player, then you keep ranking them, you keep, uh, keep you know, thinking about that as the same roster it is a different roster so he did teams not rosters well why did he say nrg with fire burner then he's probably going to put nrg with turbo pulsa at number four watch this he's going to put number four nrg with tur turbo pulsa there are all three of those players influence on the game in total 
you just have to give it to them, right? For being one of the top five teams of all time. Cucks are one of the greatest players of all time. Mark Duda, a legend. Grizzly Meister, a legend as well. By the way, see this whole... You guys have probably heard this argument or heard this discussion a lot if you've been paying attention to the top 10 teams of all time, the lists that people have been putting out. But one thing that is quite interesting is the different um, opinions you hear about how important events were back in the day. Now, the thing that I always hear said by people who think that the OG events aren't as important, they always say back then those events were less competitive. I don't really agree with that, though. I don't think that's true at all. Like, if you look at the very first online events, there were definitely scary teams that flip side. Let's think about Mike Rule's flip side. They were going head-to-head -head with Swarm. They were going head-to-head -head with the OG uh, Cosmic Aftershock. Kings of Urban were a good team. There was even, like, Untethered were a pretty good team in NA. There was the original um, Supersonic Avengers roster. There was crown and jewels when they became a team there was sk gaming the og sk gaming there were a lot of teams who came up and they were like really good but flip side throughout the entire time every team that rose up to challenge them they would beat them and they'd beat them again so there was actually a lot of competition this idea that back then there wasn't really that much competition i totally disagree i think that the shallowest com competitive era for rocket league was north america seasons like two through five where it was just g2 cloud nine and nrg and the entire rest of the region was trash like that was that was a less competitive era of rocket league than eu before rlcs became a thing for me i think there were more competitive teams in eu before rlcs than there were during rlcs in the early seasons in north america so that i i, I think it's a it's a it's an argument that sounds smart. Like you can, you, you hear it and you think, yep, that sounds like a good argument. You hear that, oh yeah, back in the day it wasn't as competitive. I don't think it's true though. I think there was definitely a lot of very good teams back then. A lot of very good teams. A lot of competitive teams. Um, right, let's see. Well, um, is it NRG? There it is, NRG with Turbo. So hi, Chicago, I've got to call you out here. How you got Flipside Tactics? With two different rosters in at five, but then you have two NRG rosters. One has Fireburner, one has Turbo. A little bit of an inconsistency going on here. Also, if you're combining the achievements of uh, Flipside with Greasy and Flipside with Mike, they're way ahead of NRG with Turbo. Way, way, way ahead. Not even a comparison there. NRG with Turbo won one Worlds, they won a Summit, and they won Regionals for NA in a four-month period, I think. And then apart from that, they fell off pretty quickly. Um, they were only a roster for nine months. Flipside with Mike, that was a 10-month period of domination. They were top two in the world the entire time. And then they won season two with Greasy. And that was another like eight-month period where, well, I think it was maybe a five-month period where they were the un undoubted best team in the world. And then they fell off in their final four months of existence. So Flipside, if, you, if you're combining those rosters, I think are definitely above NRG with Turbo. Um, what do you guys think? NRG with Fireburner plus NRG with Turbo. Is that a higher ranked team than Flipside with Greasy um, and Flipside with Mike? I think I think that would be pretty close. I think that would be pretty close. Um, but I'd still put Flipside ahead, to be honest. I think Flipside, if you take the Flipside Mike Rules plus Greasy era and you compare that with the, fire, with the NRG Fireburner, Justin Garrett, uh, Turbo Justin Garrett eras, I think flip, what Flipside did was more impressive, to be honest. It, it's close, though. It's very close. It, when you add in NRG's Jacob era on top of that, then I think NRG would be ahead. But then you can add in Flipside with Mystic, Flipside with Yukio. There was a lot of different teams here. And actually, Flipside and NRG throughout history are both extremely effective with many different rosters. But yeah, Flipside for me are way ahead of energy with turbo if you're doing it the way chicago did it here that's the only one that um, i think is way off you know although i shouldn't think i don't think you should be combining the greasy and mike rules rosters together in the first place elite, that's the real right? problem here and they go to worlds and go crazy there and not destroy it but they they get the world championship that justin and garrett have been seeking for so long with turbo just coming in right so that's crazy impressive from them yeah, NRG with Turbo were only, like, the best team in the world for, like, maybe four months. And it wasn't by a long way. They were, like, best by a little bit. Maybe more motivation. So, I, I think I, I said this during my stream on this. I think NRG with Turbo and Flipside with Greasy are both 
pretty much the same team. The only thing that separates them is NRG also got that Summit win, but there weren't even other lands when Flipside played with Greasy, so they couldn't win another LAN if they wanted to. They didn't exist, so had there been another LAN, I'm sure Flipside would have been in the running to win it. They would have been favorites to win it. Um, but yeah, Flipside with Greasy and NRG with Turbo had very, very similar results and a very, very played together for a very similar time frame. That team, just that season with Turbo alone, they were so good. And it just proved how good Turbo was. They could just transfer regions uh, and win a world championship, right? Coming down to the top three. So his top three is going to be um, Vitality 3. And then surely he puts Cloud 9 2 and Dignitas 1. Do you guys think that Chicago has enough NA bias to put Cloud9 at number 1 here? Type 1 in chat if you think Cloud9 are going number 1. Obviously, some of you guys have watched the video. I think he's got to be putting... GFE Dignitas at number one. Number three, There's no way that he's T biased. Scrub Killer, Kate Up, and Fairy Pete. Everyone yeah. knows how good this, this is. This is fair as well. I had Flipside ahead of them. Um, but I think I value the OG Rocket League era a little bit more than other people. I could see an argument for this. It was close in my head, so in this is fair. Seven, they, Kate Up, Let's see who he put at number two. Is that really all I want to know? Um, but for number two, I'm going to have the Cloud9 roster. Correct. This roster is the ultimate meta setter with passing speed. Okay, hold up, hold up, hold up. I'm going to let Chicago finish. But he's about to spit the, the, the most overrated take of all time. I don't know why this take is so popular. I'm going to let Chicago finish, though. Let's listen to what he's going to say. Um, but for number two, I'm going to have the Cloud9 roster. This roster is the ultimate meta setter with passing speed everything squishy gimmick and torment were literally the definition of like the team you wanted to be when you played rock league you wanted to pass you wanted to be fast you wanted to do the flashy plays you wanted to score the cool goals and that's what they did and they did it at a level where they just absolutely demolished everyone when it came to worlds that day two and uh day three i believe of season six they just demolished absolutely everyone dignitas in the finals bracket reset demolished the things they did to win that world championship absolutely absurd so and as well as so many other land victories i think and they had a streak i don't know how long of consistent top four finishes at lands which is just crazy being that consistent at the highest level all the time so that's just mind-blowing um but just the way they changed the game the meta all that it just the players themselves how legendary they are in the game of rocket league uh even to this day you have to put them in the top two but number one I all right all right i wanted to let i wanted to hear the entire take obviously before ripping it to shreds, but where did the Rocket League community get the idea that Cloud9 changed the meta like more than any other team? Where did this idea come from? Because it's total nonsense. They didn't do that at all. No, no team changed the way they played based on Cloud9 winning season six. No team. Weedem Girls continued playing the exact same way. Dignitas, had they not disbanded, would have continued playing the exact same way. Nobody changed the way that they played based on Cloud9. Not a single team. The only thing that might have changed is people might have been like, oh, Squishy landed one flip reset in the grand final once the series is already over. Maybe I'm, yeah, that was, that was kind of cool. But everybody was already trying to do flip resets. It's not, they were like, you know, I think Squishy's flip reset was like the first one uh, that was relevant. I'm not talking about the one where he landed a flip reset and the ball went in and the flip reset was pointless. Like he just dunk, he did an air dribble dunk. That wasn't even a flip reset. I'm talking about the one where Torment finished it off. That was a relevant flip reset. I think it was probably the first relevant flip reset in RLCS history. But it didn't change the way any team played. Teams were already going for this kind of thing. And there was other players in the world who were also very good at this. Anyway, that's not even the main thing. Passing. No. Cloud9 did not innovate. Well, maybe they like had a, had a couple of cool passing plays. But I saw uh, so many comments... On the Reddit thread about my um, stream that we did with T Bait, CJ, and uh, Stumpy about about Cloud9, so many people were commenting, uh, and on they were tweeting. There was YouTube comments, and there was a lot of people making the argument that Cloud9 were the first team to do three-player passing plays. This to me is absurd. That's not. It's it's not only like. It's, it's not only like completely incorrect, but it's taking credit away from teams who really did do this like an entire year before like Cloud9 were even relevant. Cloud9 before se season four weren't even in RLCS. 
Season two flip side, we're doing three per- three person passing plays. <laughs> That a whole year before Cloud9 were even in RLCS, before Muffin Man even existed. This is the most overrated take ever. Cloud9 did not. They did not. They were not even close to the first team to popularize passing. I think Dignitas passed better than Cloud9. <laughs> the team that Cloud9 beat had better passing than, than, than Cloud9. Um, what Cloud9 did do very well is they had a play style that was very, very scary to go up against because gimmick wouldn't stop air rolling um and you never know what kind of shot they're going to go for because where other teams were trying to play high percentage plays cloud nine were just going up for like really low percentage plays and occasionally it would work and the rest of the time the other team would think oh no that might work and panic and that was pretty much why they were good um on lan they had a good play style for lan because it's scary on lan when someone is doing something uh flashy so the flashy thing is true that is a true element um but the passing thing is nonsense i don't know i don't know where this came from i I think what probably happened is cloud nine when they first came along um rocket league's fan base grew significantly and people thought oh wow look that team's passing the ball maybe they invented that but no they actually didn't like it was like passing plays had already been three person passing plays had already been innovated long before them. Um, and yeah, I, 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 I don't know where this... I don't know why I keep reading this ridiculous idea. They didn't change the way the game was played, though. They really didn't. I don't think they did at all. No team changed their play style based on Cloud9. Everybody kept playing the exact same way, and Cloud9 lost like the next bunch of events that they played at. The very next event to this, TSM beat Cloud9. The, the event after that, um, Flipside won, Alan. None of these teams like decided. Oh my goodness, we have to start air rolling in the Dominus. No, it, did, it didn't change anything. It didn't change anything at all. Um, but hey, at least at least Chicago got number one correct. There was something else that Chicago said, which is inaccurate, by the way. He said that on the season six run, they dominated everyone. That's actually not true as well. NRG threw against Cloud9 in the lower bracket. NRG were 2-1 up. They were 2-1 up in the series. They just beat Cloud9 4-1, two games in a row. And then they lost 2-1. And then they lost 2-1 in overtime. And they should have won that. They should have won that game. NRG threw it. So Cloud9 would have actually finished 8th at season six if NRG didn't throw. And then they actually only beat Flipside in game five as well. I don't know. I wouldn't call that domination. They they dominated the grand final, but that was really all that they dominated. That was it. It was still a very, very impressive run. I think that run is to me one of the best runs. It's that and the Northern Gaming run with Devo are the most impressive uh worlds runs for me. Although I also think that the Vitality run at season seven was very impressive where they beat NRG, swept Cloud9, beat G2. That was a very impressive run on the final day as well. Um, I don't know. What do you guys think? Did Cloud9 invent passing? <laughs> did, did they did they change the way the game was played? Because I don't think they did any of that. I think they had a flashy play style that was scary to go up against on LAN because people are like, oh, for goodness sake, why is gimmick freestyling on us? What if we get freestyled on? That's embarrassing. But they didn't change the way the game was played. Uh, they definitely weren't the first team to do three three person passing plays i don't think they were ever even the best at passing i think dignitas were the best passers um and og flipside were way ahead with passing than everybody else but yeah they were flashy though they're a very very good land team and they had sporadic success on land that's why i have them at number two as well because their resume is undeniable they had uh lots of High place, high placings, um, and they did win lands, albeit quite spread out. They weren't as dominant as Dig. I'm going to put Dignitas slash Gale Force, which is Turbo, Panda, <laughs> and up again. Three of the greatest players of all time. Two world championships, three world championships, and four, I believe, uh, on when it comes to Panda and then Kadop and then Turbo. Again, that was just the definition of a dynasty in Rocket League. Kind of like uh, Dignitas or BDS right now this season, except uh, with lands. And, you know, you can't really say much. The team just won everything. League play, regionals, whatever they would show up to, 
and they would need to win, they would win. They did fall to second in a couple tournaments, I believe. But, you know, they literally just would hop in a tournament that mattered the most. You're like, okay, Dignitas is most likely. Yeah, the, 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 Chicago's really, he's spot on with his Dignitas points here, by the way. He's, 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 he's really uh, very accurate with these. Like, Dignitas were always, like, Cloud9 had a streak of top fours. Dignitas had a streak of top twos. Um, you know, Cloud9 had lots of wins and lands. Dignitas had, you know, wins uh, at a, the same or even higher caliber in a much shorter time frame, um, back to back to back. And they were the undisputed best team in the world for almost a year. The only two teams who have been undisputed best in the world for an entire year, in the opinions of the majority of the Rockley community, are flip side with Mike Rules and Gale Force slash Dignitas. They're the only two teams who have been, you know, widely considered the absolute best and favorites in every tournament they play in for a whole year. So, uh, yeah. That's why I rate Flipside uh, 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 almost as highly as Cloud9 and Dig myself. Um, but yeah, accurate and by Chicago. Teams, teams are saying that about that about you guys. You deserve to be the best team of all time. If you go into a land and you're like, okay, this team's probably gonna win, right? That that's just the highest praise you could possibly get. But that's it. That's probably gonna be my quick little top ten teams because I think this is just more of a casual video. I wanted you guys to just relax, watch this, um, have a quick little pick my brain a little bit quick little thoughts about it and if you guys liked it make sure to leave a like and subscribe it's free i greatly i do love this it's uh you know it's good to hear other people putting out this kind of content so that's that's cool um i might go listen to the whole thing properly later but right now i just wanted to see i couldn't wait to see what the results were so <laughs> i think that chicago's list is pretty respectable though I think it's pretty respectable the only one i disagree with is uh the flip side um position is a bit weird Everything else is very respectable.